Welcome everyone. Uh, we've got a good webinar uh, scheduled for, for today. Uh, I wanted to start things two minutes early to let everybody hop in. So uh, while you're getting adjusted, we'll, uh, we'll take a couple of minutes. We'll get started promptly on the hour, depending on where you're at, one Eastern or, you know, like where I'm at, 11 Mountain. And, and uh, we'll learn a little bit about how you guys can uh, take a little bit more control of your inventory. So let's give a couple minutes and we'll begin. Well, thank you for joining us. I want to start promptly on on time. I'm conscious of uh, of everyone's time on the on the, this uh, live training discussion that we're going to have around your inventory. Uh, before we introduce Tim and Patrick, just a few of the typical traditional housekeeping items. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll see a, a go to webinar control panel, and we're going to be using a couple of these little um, drop downs. Uh, specifically, we're going to wanting you guys to be well uh, familiar with the questions and the chat. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to kind of keep some dialogue going as the webinar is happening. And then um, we'd love to have as many questions as we can get to. Uh, we'll probably go, we'll do the questions at the end of the broadcast after the after some of the presentation time. So go ahead and get your questions submitted now. I'm sure there are a lot of them out there around your inventory. In addition, um, anybody who registered for this is this broadcast for this webinar will be uh, receiving uh, uh, the recording. Um, we we're, we'll make sure the Max Digital has it to distribute. We'll put it on drivingcells.com and it will go out an email to everyone who registered. So if they, you know, if Patrick's talking really fast or, or Tim has a comment that just really, really kills it that you want to leverage or implement because you know how like, how he is, um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll be able to go back and, and view that uh, later in the recording. So um, I think that's all I have. The, the last thing is we, we are going to do a few poll questions. So we'd love you to participate uh on how many of those um you know just to kind of keep that discussion going there's a lot of of uh, well I, th I think the title of the webinar says the best is turbulent times right now and there are a lot of questions out there and we'd love to to get feedback so we can tailor the presentation so without further ado i'm going to turn the time over to tim and patrick and uh, let's talk about inventory awesome thank you thank you bart um and thank you everyone for joining us uh these definitely are some unusual times that we're living in uh, my name is, uh, as Bart said, Pat McMullen. Been with the uh, company for 13 years. My co-host today is Tim Scoutless. Tim, you're coming up on uh, nine years in May, correct? That's right. Wow, time flies, doesn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, Tim, I think I think you and I, you know, we we both share a great love for this industry and our our dealer customers, and and specifically around inventory management. We both kind of got our feet wet long time ago at a, a small little organization, a small little independent organization called CarMax. Remember those days? I knew everybody in the company back in the early <laughs> 90s. <laughs> Not anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so Tim and I both worked on the purchasing side. Tim rose to the ranks a little bit higher than I did. He actually ran ran a store, uh, ran multiple stores. So we, we know inventory management from a big box retail standpoint that we've been talking to our customers about for, for a long time since we've been with this company. But you know, Tim also worked in retail um, for a franchise, large franchise dealership group, and for 13 years visiting thousands of dealers and talking to tens of thousands of people in the industry. You know, we, we have a good sense of both. So we're going to talk about some of that stuff today. And uh, if you're a current customer of Max Digital, we'd first of all like to thank you. And also, we're, we're Tim and I have a webinar series every Tuesday and Thursday where we talk about uh, different things that we're hearing in the industry, as well as some tips and tricks with with our current product. Um, so look for that. And also our, our executive vice president, Mike Cavanaugh, he did a webinar series today, and we have another one tomorrow with some um, market insights and recommendations for especially right now for what we're seeing. We'll talk about some of that stuff today, but um, you know, if you're a current customer, go to your login page and you can web, uh, you can register for the webinar there. So you know. I know this is an unusual current epidemic that we're going through, but you know we have helped dealers in other turbulent times, uh, 08, um, and also you know after 9/11 when the markets were you know fastly you know declining. So um, hopefully what you hear today is is helpful and useful, and you can take back to uh, your your uh, your people and your dealers. Um, so Tim, if you don't have anything to add, you want to get started? No, I appreciate that very kind introduction. Great, Don't thanks. get those a lot from you these days. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> so what will we learn today? So suggested updates to your appraisal process. We have a lot of dealers coming to us. Geez, Tim, how many how many dealers do you think we've talked to in just the last 48 hours? I mean, I, I know I'm up to 25, 30. 
Yeah. Um, lots of presentations. Lots it, was of busy, it was a busy week. You know, it almost seems like guys really got their feet under with, underneath them about how to handle this this environment. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And then also we'll, we'll talk about pricing. The way we price our inventory today compared to, shoot, three weeks ago to a month ago to three months ago is completely different, right? So we'll talk mm -hmm. through some of that as well as merchandising and some uh, some best practices that we're seeing. And then we'll end with some core store level analytics. So what are some of the best practices that we're hearing from our dealers um, that we can share with you guys? So uh, let's go ahead and the first, uh, Bart, I think the first poll question is uh, should be popping up, correct? Yeah, so how, how do you think your inventory values are, are sitting right now? Uh, go ahead and plug in where you think, uh, where, where you think you're at. See, we got, uh, we're, we just hit 20% people voted, so we'll just keep it going for a little longer. Okay. All right, guys, let's give it about 30 more seconds. We just hit uh, 63%, so we're getting, we're getting to the top end. All right, where are we at, Bart? All right, let's close this thing out. And um, there you go. Looks like uh, the majority of the people on the uh, are saying that they're 20% down. Um, very few, 5% at 30% down, 7% at 10% uh, down. So there's that sweet spot. The majority think they're 20% down. Okay, good. That's really good feedback. That's yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. And that's that's kind of what we're hearing from our from our dealers as well. So, um, you know, that's, that's very insightful. Thank you. Um, so let's start with, um, you know, the, the increased focus on the appraisal process. So, you know, a lot of this is, you know, 101, but, you know, especially now, Tim, you know, disagree with, disagree with me if you want, but I think now that we have the time, you know, especially in the appraisal, there's certain aspects to what we're used to using books for, for an example, yeah. that may not be all that relevant anymore. So, you know, what are some other things that we can look at? Obviously, market data and market listings is pretty important. Day supply, you know, it's, it's changing ever rapidly as more cars are, are coming into the, um, uh, used cars are coming into the market. Um, cost to market and car cost uh, percent to market. Uh, we talked about the books, miles per year. Tim, remember what we used to call this back in a... Back I in think, the day? yeah, I think the low mile per year, what we used to refer to as the lumpies will be lumpies. even more, you know, is that pure you know automotive gold going forward yep. uh, obviously recent sales data you know what are we selling these cars for you know now versus maybe a month ago two months ago because that was a completely different world uh back then right and then um getting the customer involved in the trading process we'll talk about that and then also this this should, this is a no-brainer using evidence and validation when presenting the numbers i think now more than ever, that's super important to show where you're getting these numbers from because, you know, are, are the books catching up fast enough? So let's let's go ahead and dive into it. Obviously, um, you know, inventory management as a whole, there's a lot of different companies out there that that have a platform like this to show examples. We're going to use our our product today, um, but if you use any any of the ones that are out there, they all should have the same uh, market data and the different stuff that we're going to talk about today. So. Um, the first thing, I have a lot of clients coming to me saying, you know, well, hey, if I can't trust the books or, you know, Mannheim and uh, Odessa, they're running, all the auctions are running at 80, 90 percent no sale rates. What should I do? What, what are some other things that I should look at? So, you know, one, one of the areas that we send them to is market listings. So looking at it from and Tim, we used to do this, you know, in our in our previous lives. You know, it's not so much what is the car worth at the auction, but, you know, if I bring this car in this morning and put it on my lot this afternoon, where do I need to be to sell that car? So working from a retail mentality backwards into the trade. Yeah, I was I was in, had a conversation yesterday with a, a used car director out of Ohio, and he he used the exact term um, that you just did, right? What it, for many years during the good times that you could use the back yourself into, you know, what can I sell this car for? Um, minus my reconditioning, you know, minus my estimated profit, yeah. you know, boom. That might not line up with the books, the auction data, 
Um, but that was okay. We, we were in the retail business. I think in today's turbulent times, we need to rethink that just a little bit more. The term ACV, actual cost of vehicle, absolutely needs to be considered when putting a, a value on a car. Yeah, and, and using that that mindset, you know, is is it is it okay to be not like if you're gonna work from a retail standpoint, is it okay to be at ninety percent to the market? I, I don't I don't think so. You know, like we we gotta we gotta really figure out, you know, where is the inventory today? How long has that inventory been online? Um, and then maybe even back up a little bit further from a retail standpoint, so we can set ourselves up in a good good position to retail out of that that inventory as fast as possible. For sure. Um, so looking at your market listings, we all have it uh, in all the different companies. So make sure you're, you're utilizing that. Um, the next part, Tim, I'm going to turn it over to you. I've been talking too much. Um, <laughs> um, if you want to go it, through day supply and the others. Yes, right. So most tools today um, take day supply from Internet data, either, you know, a, a vast array of, of listings. And in a traditional time, I think a market day supply is a valuable tool you know, to help you to understand, you know, the the potential turn of this this inventory. Um, mm -hmm. Remember, most tools, the tool, uh, you know, that you're looking at today, we use a rolling 90 days. I think in normal times, that's probably pretty good. 90 days ago, though, the world was a very different place. Um, at this particular, this is a 16 Suburban. Um, the market day supply um, was for an LT, you know, for all Suburbans was 50. Um, you know, those matching, this was probably a little bit higher trim. Yeah, $37,000 one is a little bit slower. Um, you've got to look at that and say, you know, what has it been uh, more recently? You know, and, and let me ask you, Patrick, you know, what can dealers do? I'm, I guarantee there's guys on the phone right now going, well, what do I do? If, if the market yeah. data is, if there's a lag, what, what can I do? I think it's a great question. Well, one, one thing for, for our customers that are on the phone, we're, we're actually exploring and, and working feverishly to, to update um, and look at those market listings in a shorter period of time. Absolutely. So look for an alert for that. But I, I think, you know, one, one of our good friends, I uh, won't name the name of the group, but um, he has his, uh, his team, you know, while it's slow, looking at his competition and, and watching their, their websites and taking a vehicle mm -hmm. count and looking at, you know, are they... Are, are they selling stuff? Are they are, are they getting are they getting kind of kind of heavy in inventory? So you know mm -hmm. during the downtime right now, you know shopping your competition like a customer would, I think is super important. <clears throat> so um, cost to market and percent to market, you know this is a um, an, an a metric that a ton of guys um, will be looking at, um, you know because look, quite frankly, right your cost to market that really affects your pay plan. Right? If there's if there's not a lot of spread there, um, and you're still being paid um, off of the gross, that's going to make a guy probably lose some sleep. And I get it. I, I would be doing the same thing if I was there. Yeah. Um, but I would I would I would tell you this: um, you want to live to fight another day. So um, cost to market might not mean so much. I think it's probably more about percent to market. And yep. where are you now? Where was it? And what cars? You know what cars recently came on and where are they at um and to your point you know is 90 is it 92 is it 90 yeah yeah uh 100 and we just talked to you know a big group yesterday and you know they were having that same debate you know how, mm -hmm. how far back of you know the others that are online do i need to be <clears throat> you know unfortunately we don't have a crystal ball but you know it like tim said live to fight another day and put yourself yeah. in a situation that um yeah so and I and one other point on the on the appraisal. Listen, guy, I would um, caution you because um, I know there's there's people out there that you're gonna see this appraisal or something similar and go, I got a deal, and it's the first deal you've run in two or three days, and you're like, I'm, you're ecstatic. You got the guy on the hook. He's got good credit. He's got down payment. He's got equity. You know, um, but don't don't hurt yourself in this trade to make that new car deal. Okay, uh, you know. Um, I caution you there. That would be my advice. So Tim, um, you, you you made mention on low mileage. This one obviously yeah. doesn't have low mileage on a no, it, but you know, 2016. So it's a we'll, we'll call it a four year old car, right? So low miles per year in in our term, in my t definition, is is less than 10,000 miles per year. So that would be you know 39.9 or back. I mean, it's a it's a very high bar. But imagine that car with with those kind of miles. This kind of falls into the family of 
just your average old look what's the the mi average miles in this particular set patrick it was it's fifty seven thousand, right yeah. so this is the average miles um so you can imagine if there are and in this particular set there are 113 suburbans within 250 miles no no you know lack of supply there's 14 that are the ltz type okay great but it's the average miles um, low mile per year is where where it really is at. It's the, in my opinion, it's the number one thing consumers look at when it comes to value. Um, low miles per year and and condition perceived condition oh, of the perceived vehicle. Condition, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so so moving on. Um, so sales data. I, I um, I've told a lot of customers, you know, make sure you're utilizing your sales data in our system if you don't have a system that that provides actual sales data not just what the last listing was online but they don't tell you exactly what your your history is with this card down to the dollar use your dms print a report do something that you need to do but um i think you know we're all pre-covid you know everybody's trying to make two twenty five hundred dollars a copy front end that's not there anymore so really looking at you know recently what have i sold and then diving into that and seeing like, yeah, you know, on this particular car, um, you know, this dealer, they lost some money on this one and they made a little bit. But as we're as we're moving along, you know, if, if we if we kid ourselves that we're going to make two thousand dollars on this particular trade, it, it's it's the, the proof's not, not going to. Yeah, right? you, yeah. you haven't made two thousand dollars on one in the, in the last two or three months. What makes you think you're going to make two thousand here? Exactly. And and I think if you're if you're part of a group whether it's a two-store group or a 200-store group and anywhere in between, utilizing the power of that group, especially now. And if this isn't a core performer for me and I don't do well with this with this vehicle, where inside of my group maybe is this a better fit? So, you know, if, if I'm on average making $500 a copy, but, you know, somebody else just sold one mo more recently and, and made a little bit more, remember, we're all in this together. So, you know, harnessing the power of the group and you know keeping everybody afloat is super important so you know tim a lot of our a lot we work with you know tim and i work with our largest clients across our customer base you know they they use this and ship cars around you know based upon performance right yeah so and that, you, you're looking at this ex uh, specific example um patrick you know this they've got five suburbans right now the yeah. good news is right the, the market day supply over the last 90 days is 50 clearly this store sells suburbans quickly that's good um but they've got quite a few and we're talking a time where you know our inventory values according to the audience is down 20 percent um I mean, i've seen sales about rates down 30 to 40 percent so maybe yeah. you want to ship it someplace you know find a home for it good good call all right so this this obviously isn't our first poll question no. we, we, we snuck one in there earlier <laughs> So we that have a little bit fall. of a, Bart, Bart, yeah. That's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We didn't edit correctly, but Bart, <laughs> you want to read the next one? So how confident are you in the third party auction and book values right now? Wow. What a, what a great question. Um, I can't, you know, I can't tell you every call that I've been on um, with my customers, we're talking about the auctions, you know, um, you know, but I don't know about you, Patrick, but you know, it's, it's, I'm getting cars and I'm taking in junkers. How do I get rid of my junkers? Or, um, you know, I've got aged inventory. You know, what can I do with my aged inventory? So I'm cu really curious to see how people feel about this particular question. Yeah, Tim, you know, you know all the um, all the uh, meetings that we've had, especially this week. You know, between our team and and others in the company, and every single meeting, even though it's not that's not the the focus of the meeting. Um, everyone's hey what what's going on with the books we even had a customer call us the other day and said hey Mannheim's broken it's not showing any data well <laughs> it's not broken they're just there's no cars to show yeah so, you're, um, le you're leading the witnesses here Patrick <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly so far, what, 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 what type of uh what type of interaction yeah we're, we're at 63 percent voted so I think I think the, the leading is over uh okay. but, but yeah <laughs> Um, I don't think there's any surprise here, but maybe you guys can comment. You, you've, you've talked to a lot of dealers. We get zero percent of our statistically valid poll. Zero percent said they're very confident in the in the values right now. 
Uh, there's, you know, some people are somewhat confident, but I'll be, it's overwhelmingly 68% said they're not yeah. confident with uh, with the values they're getting from the auction of the books. Yeah, and you know, th this isn't a this isn't a knock on, you know, those those great partners of ours. Obviously, we, we partner up with Mannheim and Odessa and NADA and Black Book and Kelly and Galves. Um, it's just the 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 data is not there. Um, you know, Tim, why don't you talk a little bit about the Mannheim retention rate yeah, and maybe how yes. that can help dealers? So, um, you know, there's a, a phenomenal tool out there that that Mannheim put out. Um, it is the Mannheim Market Retention. Um, and it, it uses a scale of 100. Um, and I and actually had a good conversation with a, a guy yesterday about this. And when the number, you know, dips below so, uh, to, and I think it's somewhere in the low 90s, maybe even yeah. high 80s right now, the way you see it is if it's a $10,000 car in normal conditions and the, the retention is, is at 91, you can figure that $10,000 car right now is doing $9,100 in yeah. theory. Yeah. Um, it's kind of a way to, to help the lag of you know, they use 30 days worth of data and when there's let's say let's call it the, the auctions are on pause and it's it, there's nothing they can do i mean it's a an industry that re requires a lot of people to run you yeah know? yeah so i think i think the the caution the cautionary tale here is you know we we talked about this on that webinar that we were on yesterday with like 36 gms um if, if you're using this data the same way you were three four weeks ago you're you're, you're you're gonna you're gonna put yourself yeah. in a really bad situation so yeah. you know cautiously look at this but you know use that Mannheim retention rate along with your sales data along with the market listings listen there's there's no perfect way to do this but you know you know hopefully you know some of these tips and tricks will, will resonate. I'm gonna leave, leave you with one other tip call sure. a friend that was yeah that call was a friend the, if you didn't call, remember when you were a, a buyer in training at CarMax and you didn't call the car to somebody else before you put the figure on it? You I, carried a phone, I carried a phone around that was like this yeah, big. Call somebody, <laughs> just get somebody else's opinion. It's it's that time of year. It's that These are the kind of conditions you should be doing. Especially on, you know, one or two year old vehicles with all the manufacturer incentives, incentives coming out. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're a Toyota store and you got, you know, somebody's bringing in a 2019 Dodge Ram because Toyotas are just, you know, running a great incentive right now. You, if you have a, a Dodge store in your in your uh, in your um, your group, or if you have a friend that works at a Dodge store, right. or go online and see, you know what what what, what those uh, those current what, or what they're selling those uh, those Dodges for. Yeah, so you know, take the time, you know, slow down to speed up. Tim, I'm going to turn it back over to you here because you've run this project um, for a long time for us now. Um, so you know, getting the customer involved in the trade-in process. Yeah, so um, I've had. It, I think now more than ever, it's you, if if the customer you know traditionally brings their vehicle to the store at some point, right? We've all done the sight unseen appraisals or the phone appraisals, um, but it's it's like the way of life now, right? Yeah. Um, I would you know in order to um, make the most out of the appraisal experience, you've got to get the customers uh, involved. Um, we mm -hmm. have a tool that we offer, um, the Max My Trade tool, where we we literally go through mm -hmm. ten different um, pieces of uh, condition. That hey, if you're a used car manager, you're checking the windshield, you're looking at the interior, you know, and asking the customer to rate that. Um, you know, this mutual evaluation with the customer. Um, one, even in the best of times, it sets up for a much better experience. And yeah. I think, and even in these turbulent times. Um, listen, everyone's disappointed for what you, you put on their trade regardless, and now it could be even more. So I strongly recommend getting involved. Managers, get involved with the appraisal process, especially if you want to close the trade or close the deal. Yeah, and, and if, if, if you guys aren't doing this currently, you could do this with a, with a sheet of paper and, and a clipboard, oh, for sure. right? Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you need some guidance, reach out to myself or Tim or, or just call our, call our company. They can get you in touch with us. We, we have some standard forms that, that we've seen around the industry that we, we're more than happy to share with you, whether, whether you're a customer or not. Um, you know, obviously keep your social distancing when you're walking around the car, but um, you know, it's, it's getting the customer involved because when you show that number, Tim, kind of explain how, how it sets you up to, to kind of be yeah, so of Right, so our market-based appraisal offer form that we've developed, you know, walks the customer back through the experience that we just had together, you know, discussing you know, obviously what kind of car you had, 
um, the highlights, any you know uh, issues with the Carfax or the keys. Um, you know, you can share you know a book value as a benchmark, but then it's it's you know reiterating back to the customer. So, Mr. Customer, you know, remember we we talked about your car. We agreed that um, you know the the interior, while ten might be like a brand new car, your car came back. We both agreed it was probably more like a seven or an eight. You know, and, and taking that percentage um, and running that against your book, it it really you know resonates. It's like, yeah, I get it. You know, I guess Kelly Blue Book Excellent would, would be 34, and my car's not quite excellent. You'd be surprised at how many customers that's they get it that way. And I can only imagine in these times more important than ever. Well, yeah, and you know, from the poll question, you know, we don't have a lot of faith in the, right. in the data that's coming from the book. So if we could. If we could be 20% back of whichever book value we want to show, I, I would feel pretty confident that you know I'm, I'm padding myself pretty pretty well to set myself up in a pretty good situation to bring that car in, right? I've done these appraisals in the best of times, and customers like we walk out there, and the customer admits that their car's a complete junker, and all they wanted was a thousand bucks. Meanwhile, the car's clearly worth more than that. You know, you've got to get involved with your customers, especially yeah. now. All right, so. Moving on to the next section, and, and um, we, we spent a lot of time on that one, but I think that's important because a lot of people right now, you know, they're not they're not quite sure with the books and all that. So moving on to, on on to pricing, merchandising, and current best practices. So you know, just some things that we'll look at here. We'll go through the same type of exercise. You know, looking at your overpriced units, your market list listings, market day supply, recent sales, time to market, um, options and packages. We'll talk through that. And then, you know, unique descriptions are super important now. Um, you know, in, in the best of times, we're all busy, customers coming in. Maybe we had a, a program like ours or somebody else's that would, you know, automatically build the ad for you and ship it out. You wouldn't even look at it. Now, with, with some downtime that we have, get in there and really customize your ad descriptions because your, your physical front line, people aren't walking it. Where are they walking, Tim? They're walking online, right? They're walking yeah. their virtual front line. Web, so web make traffic's steady. Web traffic's great. It's still great, but make sure that your virtual front line is standing tall, just like just like you do with your your uh, physical front line. So, um, you know, with with overpricing. So, Tim, I'll, I'll turn this over to you. But yeah, you know, looking I, at looking at your inventory in buckets, I think it's. I know every good. every uh, IMS tool out there has some sort of way to you know bring the inventory and and be able to take a ten thousand a step back and look at it from a pricing perspective. Yeah. And I went through this report the other day with a with a VP because you know um, he wants to see where his guys are priced. So I, I recommend reviewing that tool. And listen, I, I I love to tell you that you should I think you should you know should you look at the oldest cars first? I don't know if age matters. We've been on I don't, I don't think it does you know matter. unless you're in a market that really hasn't seen any impact of what's been going on, I think age doesn't matter. I'd start with my most expensive, you know, late, you know, one, two, three year old cars. Yep. You know, I'd make sure I'm in line there. Then I might check you know, what cars have a, a, you know, really high market day supply? And I would check myself there. Um, you know, we had, I, I don't know if, if, if pricing yourself at the very bottom um, today, like if, if I would do that right this minute, um, I would absolutely make sure that I'm in line though. Um, yeah. And I would continue to pay attention. We, we've debated that back and forth. I know we have. Um, and, you know, I was, on a, I was on a call with a pretty big group on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. just earlier today with uh, with our colleague ed and you know they they kind of said the same thing and you know we're yeah it's, it's great to be at 92 89 percent of the market right now but if nobody if everybody's you know if, if market demand is frozen and consumer confidence you know people are losing their jobs and you know they just they're, they're unsure if they're right. forever going to be able to get back to normal yeah they're shopping but you know, how low do you have to go to pull somebody in, you know? So I, I, I kind of agree with you now, but I, I still think, you know, to, to show an example, um, you know, here's a 2019 Chevy Impala. It's an LT. Now, Tim, if if I needed to replace this car today, uh, how many well, people are shooting at Enterprise right I now? Like, probably everybody on this call could go out and buy a 2019 Impala right now. Exactly. No problem. Like, and is there anything special about the auction? Right. Yeah. And you know, in this case, there's in a hundred mile radius, there's 48 just like mine, the LT version. There's right. 123 Impalas. This car's perfect uh, example. Yeah. So, you know, in this particular case, I, I pulled this two days ago. You know, this customer has this car priced at 
107% to the market right here. So is there anything more special about my LT versus, you know, the other 48 that are out there? Maybe the mileage, right? You talked about mileage before, but our mileage is 31.9 and the market, um, the I'm sorry, our mileage is 31.072. The average is 30, almost 32. So there's nothing average. special about this car. Would you agree? No. No. Nope. Okay. So if we, if we dive into the market listings, here's a great example. So here's our car at 21.488. Now, if you look down, it's certified. Okay, get a little bit extra money for that. But if you come down here, very close to my to my to my front door, there's two other ones. They're different colors, but okay, maybe your silver ice metallics worth a little bit more than the white one. It's not worth that much. Colors, more. big difference on an Impala. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but you know we similar mileage, but these guys are priced at 19.5 and 19.9. Yeah. Where we're priced at 21.4. So if my mom or my sister's out there shopping for an Impala, are they going to call this guy because they think his car is better because it's priced higher? No, yeah. they're going to they're going to call. So looking at your market listings, and you know we, we talked about this. Uh, I think it was two days ago. You and I were on call. The the gentleman said, you know, I'm looking every day. I'm not waiting for my buckets to adjust. I'm not looking. I'm not pricing at day one and then looking at day seven because everybody's looking at, at their inventory every day. So I think looking at it from uh, a 30,000 foot level where we have overpriced, underpriced, that could change daily based upon, you know, if, if, there's, if you've got a big Chevy store in your market that has 15 of these and they drop all the prices $2,000 and you were right by them, guess what? Now you're overpriced. So looking mm -hmm. at that on a daily basis. Um, the other thing that I think is super important is pricing proof points. So looking while you're pricing the car, obviously, where will I be in the marketplace? But then, you know, how do I compare to the quote unquote, you know, third party retail experts like NADA, Edmonds, Kelly Blue Book? And, you know, how does my price show to that? So if we if we reprice this car where it should be, which is probably somewhere, you know, close to where um, where those competitors are at 98 percent of the market. Now we're in a spot where you know we're showing we're be below not only the market but we're we're showing we're below the um the books so just like on an appraisal where the wholesale values aren't updating as as quickly as as we'd like them to just because there's no data take advantage on the flip side because these books aren't adjusting either right mm -hmm. so you know and then i we'll talk about this in, a, in the next section but you know putting that getting into your ad description and if your if your current system doesn't do this for you Typing that in and saying, you know, it's it's fifteen hundred dollars below NADA or it's nine hundred dollars below Kelly Blue Book. And so if I'm scrolling through, you know, whatever online site I am on, make sure that's in your preview. So you know, a customer get them to stop and then look at your car because a lot of your competitors aren't doing that. So anything yeah, the to price, add here, Tim? The, but yeah, the pricing proof points are huge because I always I, this is the analogy is my mom doesn't really care that you're ninety eight percent of the market. She doesn't know what that means. <laughs> She's not impressed like uh, we would be at the the bar tonight uh, later after this this webinar. She gets the idea that it's back of NADA, back of KBB. You know those things resonate with consumers. So super well, you, important. You have bars open in your neighborhood? I'm gonna. Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> not not here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna come to your neighborhood. Well, um, in, a, in a normal time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, sorry, I went, I went a little further ahead. Tim, why don't you wrap it up with uh, market day supply and, uh, and recent sales? Yeah. So, uh, well, you know, not market day supply with appraisals. Well, I think just like we're talking about when we were appraising the car, you know, it's it's critical to con continue to monitor what you're selling these cars for. Um, and and if you're in this late, you know, listen, there was probably a lot of people out there that. Um, we're gearing up for tax time. You were yeah. gearing up to sell your two, 300 cars a month in March, April, May, and you're stuck with the inventory. This is the kind of car you might have had. Um, uh, you know, I would be paying attention every day. One, one caution, the wholesale market has always moved faster than the retail market. Um, so while you, you get on calls and, and get into discussions like this, re remember that and, and, pay, and pay attention because um, what is it? The market day supply on this car is 60 cents. There's no doubt. I mean, that was yeah. in a good time. Who knows yeah. now? Um, um, before we move on, I, I think you make a good point when you talk about the, the, the mileage bans and, you know, kind of making yourself seem like, like you're right. 
Um, uh, yeah, so well, you, we, you and I talk about this a lot. I see this a lot and I, I get why guys do this, um, but I'm gonna, this is my word of caution to, to everybody. If you're pricing cars, especially a late model vehicle, um, we, when you remove the, the low mileage cars from your competitive set, you now have no visibility into what those cars are priced for. There could literally be a guy across the street from you with a an eleven thousand mile car because those cars aren't showing up in this competitive set, and yeah. he's priced at eighteen nine. Yep. And then and then what do you do? So um, I hope that guys are starting out wide and then coming in. Um, that's a good practice. Definitely, that, maybe that, get rid of the high mileage ones. And that's a good practice and the best of times but right right now i mean wh why not look at the whole market because totally. if, if everybody's kind of taking this you know um this approach to you know get lean fast you're, you're gonna you're gonna miss a competitor that's 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 getting more aggressive than you mm -hmm. not to mention you know are there any 2019 brand new cars that are still out there yeah. you know and, and knocking those out of the subset maybe your price higher than what what they're selling that new car for right now for so. sure okay good stuff um all right, uh, time to market and merchan merchandising alerts. So yeah, I mean, if, if so, um, it's a great time to be focusing on time to market. Um, I imagine that your service area, if you're in an area that's closing, even service is open, or if you're limited. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I haven't heard that they're off the chain mm -hmm. busy. So now is a great time to keep your shop busy with any car that you're running through um, used car, and they should be coming through quick. I've always promoted uh, one to three days to the front line. I would be like zero to two days, you know, 48 hours. Ch challenge your guys um, because it is not for sale today if it's not online. So measuring time to market. Um, and then hit the button, Patrick. Yeah, uh, I would continue to review what vehicles are not online. Just because times have changed, you know, the internet still has a chance to the plumbing to break. You need to be reviewing how many cars are, are, are online. And then walking through critical alerts, like you know, checking your your uh, conversion rates on AutoTrader, Cars.com, Car Gurus. You know, where am I getting high activity? Where am I getting low activity? Um, am I missing packages? Am I all my cars booked out? Do I have all the photos? I mean, that, I know it's this basic one-on-one -on -one stuff, but man, you might have. I know some dealerships let people go. You, you might have let the guy go who used to do this, and now there's a big gap. <laughs> yeah, oh, we true. ran into that the other day. You know, right, I did. you know. A uh, customer of ours had 127 vehicles that needed repricing, and he's like, "Oh my God, I forgot that, that guy's job. Anymore. That wasn't right. his job two weeks ago." So, you know, um, you know, I, I would also say to the dealers that are out there, you know, just like you guys, you know, I, as from a from a vendor standpoint, uh, you know, we're we're on lockdown too. So, you know, we have more. I'm not on trains and planes and automobiles right now. Neither is Tim. You know, we have we have a little bit extra time now. Um, to really dive in and help. So whether you're a customer of ours or, or you know, any of the other you know, vendors out there, utilize their expertise and, and take some time to really dive deeper into you know, what you're doing and, and how you're doing it and, and, and learn from them. Because you know, we, we, we see stuff from coast to coast. You know, so you know, just utilize our, uh, our expertise. Um, so Tim, if we look at you know, what makes up a good ad description, um, you know, what, what, what are some, what are some of the highlights? That yeah. You so make? you obviously want to, we used to call it hitting the mark, right? Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we're validating the price. We just talked about that with the pricing proof points yeah. um, and even versus market. I think that's some, there's some value there. Um, you should be highlighting car, Carfax or auto check um, equities. If, if you're a one owner or no accidents, um, absolutely can, uh, they should contain those elements. It, remind customers if your vehicles are certified, whether dealer certified or manufacturer certified. Um, include expert reviews from third parties. It's great that you, 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 I guarantee you love the car. You bought it, you own it, you got to sell it. But what are other parties, you know, what's car and driver saying about the vehicle? Yeah. And then if you've got tools that have integration into the manufacturer packages and equipment, like we do here at Max, imagine a place where, you know, your ad or even your, your sales consultant can tell the customer online, you know, the good news, Mr. Customer, this car has the sport, cold weather, and tech with confidence um, yeah. and, and share that value um, all the way down to, um, you know, exactly what is what is included in those particular packages. So. Yeah, and, and if, if, if your current provider doesn't provide that, that information for you to, to, where it automatically does it for you, or, you know, a list of the options that, or I'm sorry, packages that could be on that car, 
you know, there, there's a lot of tools out there where you can, you know, MaroniLabel.com, where if you know you can go in, pull the pull the original build uh, sticker, and get in and, and massage your ad, and you know, really really spruce it up. Because yeah. remember, the virtual front line is so much more important right now than your physical front line. You want an extra to- couple hundred bucks for your guard, you're gonna have to, you know, tell them why. 100%. And and to that point with the virtual front line compared to, you know, your um your physical front line, you know, shop shop your competition online. Like shop um on those third party sites that your your customers are on and how do your ads look? You know, are you do you have a um, you know, generic ad or is somebody writing something in in what we call like car speak, you know, floor mats so clean you can eat off of them, stuff like that? Or are we putting the relevant relevant information that, you know, Tim used an example of his mom and I, so did I, you know, the, the Carfax one owner, the uh, BMW certified, the key features, the option packages, you know, which make sure that your ad is the one that somebody's going to click into versus your competition. Um, photos, Tim, I know that's a big one right now. Um, yeah, you know, um, I imagine photo guys, you know, might have switched job duties or taken on some more, might not even be around, but, you know, we walk through this car. And I don't think this was very far. This wasn't a northern store. Yeah, I no. mean, I think it's a good time to swap out your your snow photos. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, back to the vein of you know looking at your inventory like like a customer would. Um, all right, last piece here, then we'll wrap up for questions. Um, you know, what are what are the best practices that 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 you can do on a daily and weekly basis? You know, so appraisal closing rate, daily trade walks. Stop the drop, that's a term that we came up with. We'll talk about what that is. Sweet spot sales, another term that we came up with. Um, looking at your aged inventory by bucket. Um, Tim said before, you know, yeah, it's it's important to look at our aged inventory, but all our inventory right now is super important, right? Um, average cost to miles, cost to market, um, water reports and, and price to market. So let's just dive in, Tim, for sake of time. Um, so appraisal closing rate, why don't you, why don't you talk about this? Yeah, and, 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 I, you know, I, I asked a guy yesterday, I said, are you more concerned about taking the cars in right or closing a bunch? And, and he answered, honestly, he's like, I still want to take cars in, but I'm going to take them in right. So, you know, uh, I, the one thing I like here is, you know, are you using the tools? Let's not skip the corner. So our trade analyzer usage, um, you know, we, we highlight that. And then obviously the appraisal closing rate, um, average immediate wholesale. I, you know, I don't know how much wholesaling is going on, but you know, where are you at when you sell those, those, you know, kind of those junkers right away? Are you make, making a lot of money, or do we need to adjust and whatnot? Now, what about what about daily trade walks? Uh, listen, you, yeah, if you're not doing those right now, because with the extra time on your hands, you're, you're costing yourself money. And I and I and I would bring, you know, bring the ACV ship, bring the deck, the 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 uh, the log from the night before. What we put in this car? And then here's a you know here's a chance just to reset um, if you have to. I've done it many times. Yep. Um, stop the drop. This is a term that we came up with. So this is looking at you know from the internet price that was online, what did we actually sell the car for? Um, because it, I'm I'm sure many of you know or can can attest to this. Our price that's online, unless you're a one price store, is not usually what we end up selling that vehicle for. So monitoring that over a month to month basis and putting a goal in place of, you know, I don't want to be below in this particular case, you know, their benchmark is a hundred dollars. So, you know, they got a little bit of room to go to, to get up to that, but also, you know, looking at your sales, looking at individual salespeople and looking, you know, is, is one person really crushing it here with $182 discount versus this person with, you know, uh, $534. So what, what, what is, you know, um, salesperson one doing that's different from salesperson 10 and uh, just you know coaching there's a lot of time now if you have salespeople in the dealerships um, and, and your and your uh, showroom still open there's a lot of time for coaching and training and, and really sharpening the axe mm-hmm. um, sweet spot sales this is one of your favorites Tim yeah so you know our good buddy Jason you know preaches the first 30 that's what this is um, I think in normal times, you know, we really push this hard. I, I, I don't know how hard I think, you know, mm-hmm. I would be leaning on my guys right now um, with, with some of the age you might be looking at or the, or the slowdown. But in a, in a more normal time, you absolutely, you know, top dealers want to be selling 60 to 65% of their inventory in the, in the first 30 days. And I think 
you should look at, okay, you're struggling there. What percentage should I be selling before day 60? Because that's where they literally fall off the cliff. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're going we, we, to be preaching, you know, get lean. And I don't think those do, days are too far away. So this, this metric will still be relevant. Um, well, speaking, of, speaking of getting lean, you know, looking at your inventory by, by buckets, you know, yeah. um, this is a screenshot that we took just a couple of days ago. You know, this, this particular customer doesn't have all that much in the 60 plus, but with the demand freeze right now and, you know, customers, you know, not either not able to come to the store or, um, you know, the, we, we still have a lot of dealerships that are open though, they're, that they're open for business. They might mm -hmm. be working six days on six days off, but the showrooms are open. Um, but looking at this on a daily basis and watching those aging bubbles, you know, if I was, if I was at this dealership, I would be concerned that this is my aging bucket right now. I got 30% of my inventory between days 26 and 40. This is, this is going to move in the wrong direction, right? Yeah, so totally. looking at that. And then uh, this is another one of your favorites, average cost per unit. Yeah. I mean, I, I really think, you know, we talk about the one to three year old cars, the, the ones that could really take the biggest hit here, um, in the next 60 to 90 days. Um, you know, get a grasp on what your average cost is, maybe even what your average cost is per bucket and, um, and be working your hardest to get that down. Cause it, it going to go down eventually here. Maybe you, you just, I think you want to get ahead of it. Yeah. hundred percent. Um, and, uh, looking at your water, <clears throat> one of the things we actually just released this today, if you're a current customer, um, inside of our reporting tab, uh, we're looking at water in a different light now, <clears throat> excuse me. So we're looking at you know, overall, if you were to take a 10%, 15, 20, or 25% discount on, on not only the, the cost of the inventory, but also the retail price of the inventory, what does that look like? So I think, you know, everybody's worried about this right now, right? And then, uh, and then price to market. So Tim, you were talking about looking at, you know, your, your total unit cost per bucket, breaking that up. So why don't you talk about this for a little yeah, bit? Yeah, so, you know, I think, um, you know, we, a lot of guys refer to it as lot potential. Yeah. Um, you know, knowing that, and we, you mentioned drop. So we see this car, if they sold every car today at, at internet price, it would generate $319,000 or $2,500 a car. Well, you know, for a fact that, you know, um, not there's not a lot of traditional car dealers out there that don't discount. Uh, if you are, congratulations. Um, yeah. but just get a good grasp on not only, you know, potential growth in those buckets, but where are you at, where are you priced at too? Um, yeah. well, that's. You know, by bucket, you by know, bucket. If, if, if this was if this was my dealership, I'd be really concerned right here. You know, I, I've seen over the years, you know, good or bad, we could debate it. But, you know, a lot of dealers are trying to make that that gross in the first 30 days. Then they adjust to the market yeah, right. at day 31. I think now I, I, I don't agree with that practice to begin with. But I think now, you know, you, you got to be aggressive at day one. Uh, to have a chance to get lean and work your way out of this inventory. So, you know, when, when the, when the market, you know, hits the bottom, you know, you have the dry powder left to kind of, you know, buy and catch it on the way up when other people may be, may be sitting For sale sure. on their inventory. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a, you know, first movers advantage type thing. Uh, anything to add here, Tim? We're good. All right. So to recap, what do we talk about? Um, we talked about a lot of stuff, um, but appraisals, um, I think, you know, slowing down and analyzing, you know, the data. Um, I, I know, you know, Tim, when we are at CarMax, we always got judged on, you know, our time of appraisal, how fast we would do an appraisal. Um, you know, now I, I think customers would understand that, you know, and you're probably getting a, um, you're probably getting a phone call before the customer comes in, um, before you physically see them. So, taking the time to analyze the data and, you know, looking at other things that we may have not have looked at in the past. And, you know, um, get involved to get, you know, I think it's yeah, a great time, you know, understand what the, you'll learn so much from the deal by getting involved with the customer and the appraisal. Yeah. And, and, you know, not only the manager getting involved with the customer, but getting your salespeople involved in, in the walk around, you know, this is stuff that we did 20 years ago. You'd walk, you'd walk out to the car and, you know, look at dings or dents or scratches and the customer just starts talking about you know, how that happened you know, on a sheet of paper, you know, walk out and take an analysis of the car and get the customer talking about it and get them part of that, that, that process. And, you know, when you present the books, you know, if you can do that rating scale that we talked about, you know, uh, one is it came in on a, uh, on a flatbed and 10 is it's brand new. 
you know, if you can get somewhere around 75, 78% of, you know, black book average or, you know, uh, Kelly average, you're going to be in a good spot and you're going to own your inventory in a, in a good spot to, you know, retail out of it. And if you have to wholesale out of it, hopefully, you know, what we acquired it for, you know, as the books are coming down, we'll, we'll be able to sell it. Um, and, you know, create a, custom, a remote uh, appraisal process. Tim, this was one of yours. Why don't you talk about what some of your dealers are doing with the remote? Yeah. Appraisal? So, you know, I think some guys may or may not have invested in this tool and it might be scrambling now. I don't know if you need to make some wholesale changes with new products. I'm just telling you, I've seen a lot of people go out there with a, with FaceTime um, and, you know, have the customer walk, do a walk around with the car, um, send in photos, um, you know, the, get creative, but absolutely mm -hmm. you, you do want to get, uh, I think, some evidence what the car looks like and you want to get the customer involved. Yeah, 100%. Uh, pricing and merchandising. You know, Tim, I'll let you take this first uh, one. Yeah, this, this happened yeah. to you firsthand. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of job duties have changed. Uh, so make sure the person who was responsible for doing uh, whatever job that person was doing, if they've if they've gone away, you know, who's filled that gap? Um, because, yes, and are they properly trained? You know, tools like ours or anybody else out there, they do a lot of stuff. Yeah. So um, and I know for a fact all vendors are, are prepared to, to get out there. You know, please, please focus on getting cycle time down. Um, if you were not good at it before, you really got to be good at it now. Um, one to three, three to five. Um, stay lean. Um, you know, price aggressively. Um, you know, be looking at it every couple of days. I'm not really usually big on that, but I am in these this environment. Yeah. Um, and then customize those descriptions. Um, you know. You're not William Shakespeare of the car business, but I would certainly try to become, um, you know, something different than what you're doing today. Someone not as good as William Shakespeare? Yeah, I don't know who that guy is. Tim <laughs> Scoutless. <laughs> no, you don't want to be Tim Scoutless. Oh, no, I can't spell for, for anything. Use spell check if that's the case. Um, and then day to day, you know, what, what are, and these are, you know, Tim and I went, went in the Wayback Machine to things that we did in our past and, you know, that have kind of fallen by the wayside in, you know, recent recent times, you know, in the good times. But trade and lot walks, you know, if, if you're a manager, you know, walk the trades, um, you know, obviously, but walk them with your with your sales folks, too. If you have salespeople on, on the lot, um, you know, introduce that trade to them, get them excited about it. Uh, lot walks with your aged inventory, you know, if, if you're Every inventory management provider also provides a um, a mobile, you know, version of, of their system. So walk if you got some age stuff or some stuff you're just not sure about, walk it and look at it and look at look at the market while you're standing at the car and you can make pricing decisions right there. Um, watch that aging inventory. Um, you know, we talked about getting the sales associates to to walk that with you. And watch the expensive inventory. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100 percent And you know, last but not least, you know, we talked about this a couple of times utilize us as, as vendor reps. And, you know, we, we have jobs because of, because of you folks and, you know, your success is our success. So, you know, we're here for you. Um, we have a whole team of people that are, you know, standing by, you know, working with clients every single day, proactively reaching out to them, but, you know, uh, make us reactive, you know, call us up, call up any of your vendors. And, you know, I don't care if it's a CRM company or inventory management or a website company, there's probably something that you're missing, uh, especially CRMs. They do a lot of things. Learn something new every day about the programs that you're paying for uh, to get better. So, Tim, Absolutely. anything to to say in the recap no, here? That was a great way to finish. You know. All right, perfect. So, guys, thank thank you so much for your time, Bart. I'll turn it back over to you. Uh, we got any questions out there that we can answer for the folks? Yeah, let, let's let's run through some of these. Uh, Christian wants to know. You know, Dale Pollock uh, suggests a sell-off of used inventory. Uh, can you comment on this and his thought process? Yeah, um, Tim, I'll take a stab at this and you can jump in. I, in, in a perfect world, yes, I, I think, you know, we're, we're consulting our dealers on, you know, getting, getting more aggressive now and getting lean as, as fast as possible. Um, but from talking to probably 20 of our top 25 clients over the last <clears throat> three days, um, when the market reopens, that's, that's a good strategy. They're having a really hard time just getting traffic right now to do that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't dis disagree with Dale. I think, um, you know, we're, we're anticipating, you know, it's wholesale values 
and retail values are going to drop pretty consistently, even when the market reopens, you know, 60 days plus. So I, I don't think it's, you want to do a fire sale, but you, you definitely want to put yourself in a position to um, be aggressive and uh, we're calling it don't catch the falling knife, right? Don't, don't, don't catch, don't start buying on the way down. Wait, wait till it hits the bottom and then you can start, you know, you'll have that dry powder left to grab inventory and be able to, you know, make, make some profits. You're going to lose some money by doing this strategy, but the, the long term where we can, where we can retail out of it, we can buy low and, and sell when everybody else is holding that inventory and they're waiting, they're playing the waiting game. If we can start getting aggressive and then catch them on the way up, we're, we're going we're gonna to make the money back. So Tim, anything to add there? Yeah, no, I, I, you, you mentioned it at the end. I, um, retail, 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 yeah. retail out of your stuff. Yeah. You know, break even, make a little, lose a little, make it up on the back end and wait for it to come back. Okay. Earlier on, in, you guys mentioned uh, lumpy vehicles, and uh, Joseph wants to know, are you saying lumpy vehicles will or are more valuable than before? And um, the uh, kind of a second part to that, is this true for late model or just three plus year old vehicles? So, um, yeah, I've always, remind if I take this one, Patrick. So I, yeah. I've always um, preached to my dealer core that 10,000 miles per year and under um, can command a higher um, value than not, you know, those non or middle mile or high mile per year cars. Um, if you've ever been to an auction and you've seen the CarMax guy, I'm just going to give this trade secret out there for all my CarMax brothers who are out there now. The, I was, you could raise your hand and you didn't have to put it down if that was a low mile per year car. And we were, ch you were challenged when that car came back to price it too much. Um, you know, the 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 industry in general, in my opinion, undervalues these low mile per year cars. And I really think going forward, these cars will be just as value, if not more. Um, yeah, the current year cars. So you know, a 2019 that should be a single digit mile car. You know, we just took we looked at that example of the 19 Impala. A yeah. How many of those are out there with 30,000 miles? Right, Enterprise and Hertz has got a ton of them. The low mile per year one maybe, but that you know 17, 16, 15 with less than 10,000 miles. They're, those are going to be your gross cars um, in all kinds of conditions, and I think now too. Good question. Uh, I like how you're using of, lumpy now too, Bart. That's a good. Let's get that started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I love that. Um, here's a here's a we're kind of talking about a different version of a sell-off. Um, Robert's asking, do you think the manufacturers and rental companies are going to dump all the excess inventory that is building up, or will they do what Chrysler did back in '09 and let it, and let it trickle back into the market? over a six, e, eight, even a 12 month pace. <laughs> I, had a I had a conversation ahead, about ahead. this this morning. Yeah, go um, ahead. Yeah, you know, I think there's this perception that there's a wait and see. Um, I think that's our analysis right now from some of the large inventory companies. Um, you know, it would be my guess that uh, cooler heads will prevail. And as opposed to shoving a bunch of inventory out there, um, I think we probably will see a trickle. But I think that's yet to be determined. Yeah, it's 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 hard to say too, Bart, too, because if you look at 08, like for for me, I was I was I was with First Look at Max Digital during that time, and um, I was still traveling every week. You know, we we actually we actually grew during those times because dealers at that point, even pre-owned inventory management wasn't a a thing, right? Pre-owned inventory was where they put their over um overpraised you know to make a new car deal that's so you know we actually grew so i was on the road and traveling and you know was in rental cars and was on airplanes right now it's completely different you know there's there's some states where they got border checks and stuff right now so i mean from looking at the past you can make that assumption tim but we don't know i mean i my buddy sent me a text last night um he got a, a notification from i think it was uh american airlines like they're expecting almost no customers for you know the next few months. So I know rental car companies, they're sitting on a lot of inventory right now. Tim and I both worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car uh, right out of college. And you know we would run our branches at anywhere between 94 to 96% occupied. And just five minutes from my house is the Tampa airport. And I know they, for a fact, they have probably 5,000 you know, enterprise cars at that airport. And if you're running consistently at 94, 96% occupied, you can, you know, you don't have to have the space for that. But when all, when those vehicles are grounded, I mean, people are renting out fairgrounds and, 
you know, stadium parking lots just to house these rental cars. So it's tough to tell. It's, it's really tough to tell. Wow. One thing though, that is coming in the market, there's four point, Tim is number 4.1 million lease returns this year. It's 60% higher than five years ago. And just yeah. between the months of March and March, uh, May, yep. there's a uh, 1.8 that are set to come back in. So, you know, there's going to, not only you got the rental cars, but you got the off lease returns. Yeah, the, the, the inventory is going to be coming from a lot of different spots. It's a little bit different, than, like you said, it's different than 08. Yeah. We'll say though. Yeah. Good, very good question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Scott is asking, and I know this is another one of these loaded questions, but he's, he's asking, what book values are most important to check today? Uh, your, um, your sales, your sales book. Yeah. <laughs> what did you, what yeah. did you just sell? The, uh, if you have a one that you just sold it for, um, you know, I, I think as a, uh, if you're an editor or producing a book, uh, you know, you're probably reluctant to really start whacking the values of, of the, the cars in your books. I think we, um, you know, there's lots of information out there from Black Book and NADA and Kelly, and they're all hitting them. Um, I, I don't. I don't know if I would be relying on one particular book. I don't know what, you, what your thoughts are, Patrick. Well, I, I also think, you know, if, if no sale rates are 80, 90 percent over the last couple of weeks, mm -hmm. that's affecting, you know, everyone, not only the auctions, but but the, the books as well. So, you know, it's it's very it's a very small data set to go off of. Yeah. So um, I, I think sales history and then when you're looking at your market listings, you know, making sure that if you are going to bring that car in, it's a retail piece, you know, back you're up enough that, that you're that you're in line. We ho I hope that this is only temporary with these traditional values. Yeah. The values. And you use that. You, I mean, it's a it's you know, it's part of a competitor family of ours, but they have a good product. Use the Mannheim retention rate, you know, and look at, you know, if, if it's running at 88 percent, you know, that means that the values are down from the previous week, 12 percent. So, you know, keep an eye on that, too. Speaking of trades, uh, Michael mm -hmm. wants to know, should we be wholesaling trades that we are not retailing now or hold on to them another 30 days to see what the market values are? So I think if you, in my, my opinion, I think if you're a dealer that um, can, if you can turn out trades um, for cash, I think you should. I know that there are some dealerships, some dealer groups that are struggling with tr their traditional outlets um, for multiple reasons. Right, um, but um, I, I I work with the guy real close, and and he's doing the best he can. And I call him, we call him immediate wholesale, right? It's that 01 Pontiac Grand Am with hot AC and missing hubcaps, right? You just got to get your cash back. I think if you can, you need to be turning those cars if you can. Yeah. Yeah, and also I think you know we talked we talked a lot about one to three year old vehicles, um, but an eight thousand dollar car, seven thousand dollar car. Are those going to be hit as hard when the market right, reopens? Right. A seven thousand dollar car is a seven thousand dollar car. Right? No, but it's but you know a smaller dealer he needs that cash on hand. I mean, yeah. you know. Yeah. So. True. True. The last question I'll, I'll go ahead and take. Um, you guys, I got this one. Uh, no, Zachary's asking. Um, you know, he said he's been having audio issues and he's wondering is there a way to get the recording? Yes, we will send it out. Uh, as soon as it gets done being processed from, from the webinar platform, we'll send this video out to anybody who registered or attended. So I know that, that, that Tim and Pat, you guys went through some stuff pretty quick. So it's a good chance for you to go back and, and, and do this. And, and I want to, I want to appreciate, uh, I mean, I want to thank you guys. I really appreciate you coming on and, and, and having this pretty frank conversation about, about inventory. And there's, there's a lot of unknown out there. And so once again, kudos for you guys and, and everyone attending for, we're coming together and, and trying to make some sense of this of this uh yeah you know, good sense of plan. thank you well, we we appreciate being part of it bart you guys have always been good partners with uh, max digital over the years and we appreciate everything that you guys are also doing to inform dealers out there of you know different different things that you're seeing so thank thanks to you all right well everyone thank you for joining us this webinar we hope to see you on future ones and 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 good luck and, and we'll talk to you soon